Whole. Now, before listening to this audiobook, you must have read it beforehand in order to revise effectively. And now, you can subscribe to our Instagram handle and all links given in description. 6.4.2 Cork Cambium As the stem continues to increase in girth due to the activity of vascular cambium, the outer cortical and epidermis layers get broken and need to be replaced to provide new protective cell layers. Hence, sooner or later, Another meristematic tissue called cork cambium or phelogen develops, usually in the cortex region. Phelogen is a couple of layers thick. It is made of narrow, thin-walled and nearly rectangular cells. Phelogen cuts off cells on both sides. The outer cells differentiate into cork or phelum while the inner cells differentiate into secondary cortex or phelodrum. The cork is impervious to water due to suberin deposition in the cell wall. The cells of secondary cortex are parenchymatous. Phelogen, phelum, and phelodrum are collectively known as periodrum. Due to activity of the cork cambium, pressure builds up on the remaining layers peripheral to phelogen and ultimately these layers die and slough off. Burke is a non-technical term that refers to all tissues exterior to the vascular cambium, therefore including secondary phloem. Bark refers to a number of tissue types, viz. Periodrum and secondary phloem. Bark that is formed early in the season is called early or soft bark. Towards the end of the season, late or hard bark is formed. Name the various kinds of cell layers which constitute the bark. At certain regions, the phelogen cuts off closely arranged parenchymatous cells on the outer side instead of cork cells. These parenchymatous cells soon rupture the epidermis, forming a lens shaped openings called lenticels. Lenticels permit the exchange of gases between the outer atmosphere and the internal tissue of the stem. These occur in most woody trees. Figure 6.10. 6.4.3 Secondary Growth In roots in the dica root, the vascular cambium is completely secondary in origin. It originates from the tissue located just below the phloem bundles, a portion of pericycal tissue, above the protoxalarm forming a complete and continuous wavy ring which later becomes circular, figure 6.11. Further events are similar to those already described above for a dicotyledon stem. Secondary growth also occurs in stems and roots of gymnosperms. However, secondary growth does not occur in monocotyledons. Summary anatomically, a plant is made of different kinds of tissues. The plant tissues are broadly classified into meristematic, apical, lateral and intercalary, and permanent simple and complex. Assimilation of food and its storage, transportation of water, minerals and photosynthates, and mechanical support are the main functions of tissues. There are three types of tissue systems, epidermal, ground and vascular. The epidermal tissue systems are made of epidermal cells, stomata and the epidermal appendages. The ground tissue system forms the main bulk of the plant. It is divided into three zones cortex, pericycle and pith. The vascular tissue system is formed by the xylem and phloem. On the basis of presence of cambium, location of xylem and phloem, the vascular bundles are of different types. The vascular bundles form the conducting tissue and translocate water, minerals and food material. Monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plants show marked variation in their internal structures. They differ in type number and location of vascular bundles. The secondary growth occurs in most of the dicotyledonous roots and stems and it increases the girth, diameter, of the organs by the activity of the vascular cambium and the cork cambium. The wood is actually a secondary xylem. There are different types of wood on the basis of their composition and time of production.